All right, guys, welcome back to Drinking and Drawing. Today, some of Yunnan Sourcing's tea once again. I have the 2021 Demon Ox Ripe Pour. This tea has quickly become a favorite of mine. I absolutely adore it. And thus, the reason why I wanted to kind of bring this to a video is because I just love this tea and think it deserved a video of its own uh, with some of my art. So. I love this tea because it's very chocolatey, a bit mushroomy, very woody, very wet tasting tea. It's just delicious. It really takes you to like this enchanted mushroomy forest, thick foresty kind of flavors, but also very chocolatey at the same time. Uh, it was the first ripe pour that I had had since last year or so. It's really like one of the first really good ripe pours that I had the chance to taste, thanks to you non-sourcing. And uh, yeah, it's just fantastic. And I'm thinking about getting a cake of it. I haven't quite mm, committed to that sort of thing, but I'm seriously considering it. Uh, I really do need to go and shop for more of you non-sourcing's teas when I get the chance because it's just absolutely delicious tea. Just amazing. So to talk a little bit more about tea, I guess. I have a ton of tea that I've just been reviewing on my tea tumbler. <laughs> and I guess I wanted to say thank you for all the recent support on my tea tumbler. Kind of strange. Since last video, there's been like a small influx of people that tell me that they like my tea posting on tumblr. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm not a very like well-practiced tea drinker. I'm still really new to the game and stuff, but I've been really enjoying just going on there and reviewing the teas that I like. And then using that blog as kind of a guide for future shopping. So if I end up just saying to myself, oh, you know, I think I want to get some tea from Yunnan Sourcing again. I wonder if I should get a cake, like what tea should I get? And then I go look back on my blog and I see that I gave Demonox five stars out of five, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go and I'll buy a cake of this. Uh, but I'm not really a big cake person when it comes to tea. I don't, I don't really, I try not to own any tea cakes because I live in a dorm, so it's a bit difficult for me to take care of tea in this humid city as well. But I did accidentally get a, acquire a tea cake recently, and I just don't know what to do with it probably gonna have a massive tea party when I get home um, from from finals for spring break and let my friends drink it drink through it with me because it's just way too much tea for me anyway this this tea demon ox is just delicious it really is a delicious tea and I find that I've really been enjoying a lot of you non sourcings teas they've just been really stellar and it's it's never a miss some teas are, are just not for me. You know, I buy a tea and it's just not my thing. But for the most part, you know, sourcing has been a really, really good supplier of tea. And I think next time I buy from them, I'm going to try to buy from their, <laughs> their supply in China because I really want to see how big their catalog really is and maybe get a couple that I wouldn't typically be able to get here in the States. Anyway, I, I'm opening up my sketchbook, my f fat massive sketchbook and doing some revolutionary girl Utena drawing, which I didn't really mean to do. I'm drawing jury from revolutionary girl Utena and I, I'm just, just vibing. <laughs> I, I sped it up again. Once again, I'm sorry. Yeah, no microphone still, no new microphone still. I'm working on it. You might hear some terrible noises in the background. Maybe I'll lower myself like a little bit. It'll help. Does that help? I have no idea. I might be just like too quiet now, who knows. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I just mailed back my mic. It should be getting back to Road, their warehouse, in sometime this week. And when it does, and they're gonna send me a new one, and it's gonna be all good, and I'll be able to record while I'm drawing, and there'll be even longer videos, and it'll be really cool, it'll be a weekly thing, I'll taste tea live, and uh yeah, just dreaming about it. Anyway, I did draw a jury. I'm not a huge fan of jury. <laughs> I think I think there's a misconception 
out there that I like this character. Um, she's like not a character that I'm too fond of, but I, I still draw her because I think she's pretty. So <laughs> these things happen. Anyway, if you haven't seen Revolutionary Girl Utsuna, I'm not going to spoil anything uh, with my art or whatever. You should go watch it. Um, it's great. And you should go look up that trigger warning list on Tumblr before you go watch it. I know a lot of people like think that's ridiculous or corny or something or you know I'm not a wuss I could go into this I'll be fine you know I, I still recommend it just because some of it's kind of sensitive so <laughs> it's a really good show though it's my favorite anime by far by a long shot so I'm drawing jury and I think the musicals the Utsuna musicals really softened me up to her definitely not because the actress is hot or anything. That's not why. Yeah, that's definitely not the reason why, no. <laughs> anyway, I'm drawing her because she's a good subject. She's got good shapes, or at least I pretend that she does because I... <laughs> the anime is very, like, 90s stylized, kind of not always the m most pretty or diverse art style that there is, but... Uh, when I think of this character, this is how I see her in my head, so that's the way I'm drawing her. And uh, mostly was drawing this as a way to practice working with inks uh, traditionally again. Pen, ink, and uh, sharpening up some old marker skills that perhaps I had lost. My coloring later in the video gets super duper sloppy, so but I'm I'm still trying you know trying not to lose it here in school I'm doing a lot of digital work and the only time I do traditional art is when I do drinking and drawing so this is really the only chance that I have to do something like this is when I record a video like this I say oh I have an excuse to draw traditionally for myself for a second there's just not enough time in the day <laughs> these days for me to do things that I enjoy. It's really funny, but it's true. I'm kind of gathering myself for finals right now. Finals are are almost among us, literally. It's, uh, let's see, what's today? It's the 27th of February. So my finals classes end on the 16th of March for me, but I'm leaving school, I'm leaving Savannah on the 11th to start spring break because of some complications with uh, flight information and whatnot and my father needing to move me out possibly because I might be going to Lacoste in France for my my spring quarter here at SCAD. Uh, that will be a whole video and a half I'm sure. When I move out though, <laughs> in a week or two, I'm gonna clean my room all nice. It's not that disorganized right now, but there's just like, you know, there's like a banana on my desk and there's like Cheeto, bag of Cheetos, like sitting over there unopened. Those are just some things I'd like to put into a drawer or something <laughs> before I record a dorm tour. I've always wanted to do one of those. <laughs> I know that's like so. I'm sorry. Very giggly today. I don't know why. Maybe it's the tea. Um, I don't. I don't know why that is. I've always wanted to do an art, an art school dorm tour. I think it's just ridiculous. My dorm is so bland and boring. But for some reason, uh, someone. I've had a couple of people that have asked me as well. Are you gonna do a dorm tour? Why haven't you done a tour of your dorm yet? And I'm like, dude, I live here. I don't want people to know, like, where I am. I wanted to do a tour of the dorm and like show the outside of the dorm too and the view that I have and I don't want people on the internet to know what room and what building I'm in so I wanted to be careful I didn't want to get murdered uh, from an internet person internet stalker you never know you know so dorm tour soon <laughs> dorm tour soon it's really boring in here but I would like to film one uh, I think a lot of the fascination with stuff like this is that it took me like so long to get to school like to get away and to go away to school to college like I'm 22 and this is I'm still in my first year away from home I guess I have I'm a junior but I've never gone away to school before until 
until uh, around this school year. So the idea of filming a dorm tour is very alluring to me. Like I really want to film one and <laughs> for the for the sheer reason of like flexing on my past self, I guess. A lot of a lot of what I do at school is like um, me trying to appease my past self's desires. Decisions that I make at school oftentimes revolve around that, you know? A lot of times I'll be going about my day and I'll think, uh, what, would, what would me failing high school knowing that I would never make it to art school or thinking that way, what would that version of me want to do right about now? And I'm like, go out bar hopping in Savannah or something. That's what I want to do right now. And then I go do it. And usually it's a very toned down version of what my high school self might have wanted, but a dorm tour is on the list of things that <laughs> high school me would have really wanted to do just because that's just the kind of stuff that I was uh, a fan of. So I will be absolutely doing one, even though it's boring in here. It's really bland. I don't have a roommate, so I don't have to ask anyone for permission to film their stuff. I figure it'll just be like super chill, boring, white walls, nothing else, dorm tour. But yeah, so finals are amidst us and the quarter is ending. I'm leaving school early for spring break and I have so much work to do. I'm thinking about this week filming a video. I think this week is probably the best week to do it because I haven't quite started my finals yet, but I do have stuff due this week. I think this week is probably the best time to film a video on what a week's worth of homework is like at art school. It's another video I wanted to do was like showing a bit of what my homework looks like every day and kind of teaching you guys how I go about it. So I might be doing that this week, hopefully. I do have a ton of stuff to do. And I'm slowly falling behind, I think, with my assignments. My professor has been very patient with me, but alas, I am, uh, I am very slow with my homework and I need to speed up. So, I have a red pen here in my hand. I'm drawing with red. Uh, red, who doesn't love a good red ink? I bought, I bought this Micron. Oh my god, so long ago, and this is like the first time I've used it. I bought a bunch of, a good, well not a bunch, but like a handful of Microns, new Microns, before the quarter started, thinking that I would be using traditional a lot, I guess. I'm not using traditional a lot. When school rolls around, I usually don't, um, but I really do love doing a bit of red ink work with my black inking, and I've been meaning to do that with my digital stuff as well, but there hasn't been much time to be creative in my classes. I hate to say that, you know? <laughs> I hate to say that I haven't had the chance to, to have any creative freedom in school right now, but I guess I haven't, r there's not much wiggle room with my assignments. Uh, it's, it can be a little bit stifling, and I think if you're planning on going to art school, just a fair warning about that. You will lose a lot of creative freedom. Same with just joining the industry in general. You lose a lot of creative freedom. But anyway, as you can see, my, my lines are like mad sloppy. <laughs> I just made a mistake right then and there with the hair, but uh, it's not, you know, it's a sketchbook. It's not perfect. This is the kind of stuff that I wanted to show in these videos is that I'm drinking tea and I'm making really bad sketchbook art, so I think next time I'm going to be drawing hands. Maybe I'll do some hand studies. I think my, my hand anatomy is rusty or I wish it was better. But yeah, anyway, I, I, just this has just basically just been my life so recently, huh? There's not much to talk about <laughs> when it comes to what I've been doing is like I've been drinking a lot of tea and I've been drawing a lot for homework, and that's about it. Wow, it's so exciting. Something I have been doing, I guess. I've been really into Qigong, uh, the Taoist wellness, martial arts, but it's not really a martial art. It's just a uh, an art, because there's no martial value to Qigong, I don't think. 
but it's a sort of moving meditation and I've been learning it online slowly, very slowly. I'm not very good at it, but I've been really having a good time with it and it feels really nice to do. Meditation and whatnot as well have all slowly worked their way into my routine. I feel like an old lady now, like talking about, <laughs> talking about doing Tai Chi in my room, Ooh, you know, whatever. Uh, it's fun and it feels nice, so who cares? I just started learning Tai Chi today though. I just started learning an eight form Tai Chi and it's tough, it's hard, but it's totally different from the Qigong, which is exciting to me. It's nice to have something that's a bit different anyway. So I want to talk about tea again. I want to go back to that demon ox. I feel like I didn't spend enough time talking about tea. <laughs> this video is supposed to be half tea, half drawing, and I've definitely been talking more about art school today than I have been talking about tea, but since I started talking about Qigong and Tai Chi, I might as well talk about tea again. Try to loop my way back to, uh, to Cha Dao, <laughs> the way of tea. Um, so, Yunnan sourcing, uh, uh, mad respect to them. Uh, what the hell was I gonna say? I had a, something to say about them and then I totally forgot it. Okay, I remember. Uh, Scott, who I think owns Yunnan Sourcing, I think he's he is Yunnan Sourcing. He's the guy, the man, the myth, the legend. He's very chill, and I've been enjoying watching his videos on his teas, the Yunnan Sourcing teas, while I drink the tea that he's drinking from his shop. Uh, very enjoyable experience in my opinion. He, I really love that he does that, that he reviews his own teas on his channel. Or, you know, he, he definitely like likes all the teas that he has on a shop. I would assume that he didn't buy stock in any tea that he isn't a fan of, you know. I would assume that all the teas on Yunnan Sourcing's website are certified approved by Scott, or I think he said in a video, because I've been watching his videos a lot when I drink his tea, I think he said that he lets his wife sometimes just pick teas and he doesn't drink them. Like he's got so many teas coming in all the time that <laughs> sometimes it's too much to handle. So he ha he puts faith in his wife to just pick them, which that's, uh, that's crazy that there's that many tea that he has to review. But when you go on his website, yunonsourcing.com, hashtag not sponsored. When you go on Yunnan Sourcing site, you like, you are blasted in the face with so much tea. It is insane. Like I, when I first started shopping for tea online and the Yunnan Sourcing order that I have, that the Demon Ox came from, that order is my only order from them. It was my first order from them. And the first time I went on that website, I was dumbfounded by how much tea exists in the world. And there is way more tea than what Scott is selling uh, on that site. But it was just so, it was such an eye opener to me. Like, oh my God, like tea is truly insane. Like there's just so much to try and so little money to spend. <laughs> So I could see myself purchasing from them more and more. And as spring, spring is coming close. Spring is almost here. And I, and I've been seeing a lot of the, the big tea companies talk about springtime because spring, spring harvest is coming up. I'm just like, bruh, I have not finished sampling all the teas that I want to sample. I am not ready for another harvest worth of teas from all of these suppliers, like it's impossible to keep up with the demand. So I've kind of made it a new rule. Oh, that's my Ohuhu markers. Okay, I'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> I've kind of made it a new rule for myself that at the beginning of every year, from January to February, because February is not over, so I figure this is a perfect time to make this rule up out of my, out of my head, to say it like I planned this all along, even though I did not. Um, I've decided that I will buy samples of teas that I think I'll like in January and February at the beginning of every year. And then throughout the year, I will, when I, when I go to buy tea 
to prevent myself from spending it, all that money, I will, from now on, only buy teas from samples that I enjoyed. So, like, I will only buy cakes. Um, <laughs> that's not the, thinking back, that does not sound smart. I don't know what I'm doing, okay, guys? I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just trying to... I just need to set myself a budget monthly, you know what? <laughs> like, that's really what I need to do, is make a budget. So I have a, I have another two tea orders coming in right now. I have one from Liquid Proust coming in. I'm so excited for that one. I just... Liquid Proust is this really cool tea seller here in the States, and he's kind of like a one-man show. And he has this offering on his site and called The Hookup. <laughs> So I, I bought two hookups, which means that he's going to pick teas out for me and just send them to me to try. And I also bought, I think I bought a couple oolong samplers from him. So I really need some more oolong. That's the one tea that I'm truly out of is oolong. I'm excited to try that. And I also have another order from White 2 Tea coming in, but... <laughs> I think that that will be it for a while. That's gonna be it. I'm not ordering any more tea for... I'm gonna try to hold off all of... What is this? March coming up? March is the month where I won't buy any new tea. I'm just gonna try to drink... Drink up what I got. And... <laughs> that'll be it. I'm gonna drink through my stock. And then when I'm when I'm out of tea, that's when I'll buy new tea. How's that? When I'm out of tea, that's when I will buy new tea. Otherwise, I'm not buying new tea. I think I need to set that as my standard. Is that I have so much tea, I just need to drink it all and call it a day. That's what I need to do. No more buying sexy samples on White Two Tea's website. No more adding tons of tea to my cart on you non-sourcing and then staring at it for a good five hours and then saying, oh, you know, I think I have a couple extra dollars somewhere. No, no more of that. <laughs> no more of it. I have a ton of tea and I just got I just got to power through it. I got to drink. I like a lot of tea that I have. I like, there's like not that many teas that I bought that I don't like. So the ones that I don't like, I could just give to folks if I really, really feel like it. Um, and the rest of it, I should just drink. I really need to drink. So yeah, that's kind of my, that's kind of my tea dilemma right now. You know, I'm living on the, the college dorm budget and my parents are always like, don't you ever go out to eat with your friends or don't you ever like, you know, go out to eat? I guess that's the one thing that they really always ask me. No, I don't. <laughs> First of all, no one here is really going out that much. We have so much homework as animation students that most of us are just hunkered down in our dorms all weekend. Uh, grinding it away. So I end up saving quite a bit of money just from not going out ever. And I never, I never order food. I never buy food. I never go out to eat. I never go out for drinks. I go out for drinks because Savannah is a very nice place to go out for drinks. I will say, I go out for drinks maybe once or twice a quarter, two times if I'm lucky. But so far, I think it was. I think I went out for drinks twice last quarter and so far once this quarter, which is a perfect amount because drinks are expensive. I'm 22, by the way, please. I know I'm in college, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm legal, okay? <laughs> I just want to say, I don't condone drinking, but uh, Savannah is a really, a really nice city. Lots of nice bars and places to go out. But with all that money that I, that I, you know, I have like a monthly budget for myself at school. And when I don't go out and I have that money every month, I usually spend it on tea, I guess. That's how it's been this quarter. I've been spending it on tea. That, that eating out budget. Last quarter, I spent it on video games. <laughs> I bought so many video games last quarter and so many of them I'm yet to play. I bought a ton of Switch games on the uh, eShop. <laughs> I still haven't played any of them, but I will get to it. Like Pokemon, the new Pokemon game I bought, and the Animal Crossing DLC and whatnot, all that stuff I purchased. But this quarter, it's been a, it's been a very tea-heavy spending for me. Most of my spending going towards that. 
I don't play m many video games anyway, so. To talk about my art again, I guess t it's the perfect time to loop back to what I'm drawing. So, Jury has orange hair. I I kind of broke up all, did I? I usually do like three colors worth of shading for everything. As you can see here, I'm doing the base shadow for all of her hair. So this will be the darkest value in the hair. And I don't really know if I use the right colors or not. I have a nice palette from Ohuhu. You know, they send you a little color chart. When you buy their big box of markers, they send you a little thingy that has all their, all their colors listed on it for you to color in with your markers so that you know which colors you're picking. And uh, that's what I tried to use. But her hair is... Uh, the colors are weird, but it's. I think it looks pretty good. So I do enjoy how this one came out, I have to say. Uh, the Ohuhu markers are so nice. I really, really love these markers. They are, they are just lovely and so inexpensive. Uh, you could, uh, the box, the massive box that I have of them, I think was like 30 bucks or something. I can't remember because I bought it like probably a year ago now. I just don't draw that much <laughs> traditionally to remember when I got it or how much it was. You know, I've used them a few times, but not not many. But they're really good markers. It's, it's hard to find affordable alcohol markers, and I think I saw some other YouTubers reviewing these, and I, I decided that I would bite on that deal. And when I did, I did not regret it, because they are really... Really good for their, really good for their price, I have to say. Copics, oh my god. Like, I've owned Copics, and the problem with them is that they're so expensive that you, you I, I, unless you have a lot of money to spend on art supplies, um, I don't. They're just way out of my budget, so I would buy them gradually. Like, I would get a couple colors that I thought I would need or use a lot, and then, uh, yeah, eventually your sketchbook just starts looking like it's all the same color, or all your all your marker art is all in the same color because you only own like ten Copic markers because that's all you could afford. I mean, ten ten Copic markers, I think that's like eighty bucks, right? <laughs> and then they dry out, and you need to get refills, and ugh, it's just so annoying, you know? It's terrible. So with this Ohuhu marker set, it's like super cheap for so many markers. Every color I could ever possibly need or want is in this big big bucket of markers. And I, I gotta say, I love it. I love that. <laughs> I love the uh, accessibility. Alcohol markers, I think it's just slowly getting cheaper and cheaper these days. Thank God. There was a, there was a massive, like, crave over Copic markers for so long and I feel like I don't hear a lot of people talking about them. I'm sure young younger artists like high school and middle school they probably still are hyping up Copics all the time because <laughs> that's the way that that's the way that high schoolers and middle school artists work. They talk about their lovely expensive art supplies all the time. They flex in. Uh, I remember when I was in high school and middle school with Copics was just, it was insane, like I could not escape them and I felt uh, like less, lesser, because I didn't have them. <laughs> I'm like, my art's never going to look as good if I don't have Copics, but that's so untrue, it really is. Um, it's really just not true. Copic markers do not make your art better. You make your art better. Um, it's all about technique. You can make a good piece with Crayola crayons, I promise you, as long as you have the skills there to do it. One of the nice things about these Ohuhus is that they just, they're almost identical to Copics in my mind, you know, <laughs> almost, they're almost there. I'd say, yeah, I think Copics, yeah, they're better. Copics are better than these markers, but the Ohuhu reaches so close that it's like not worth the massive price jump that happens <laughs> for me to possibly consider Copics ever again. You know, the price hike between those two markers is insane for for not that big of a jump in quality. I just don't see that as being worth it. But it's up to you, you know, if, if you have the money for Copics, go ahead. Go, go Have at it. Live your life. Live your life deliciously or whatever, you know, the devil says. I don't know. 
but you should indulge yourself if you have the budget. <laughs> I would if I if I could. I buy expensive tea. You know, I'm like a hypocrite. I was just talking about buying expensive tea. Now I'm talking about how I, I only use like inexpensive markers. So I don't feel like buying expensive tea. I'm a total hypocrite. Total hypocrite. So, yeah, so there's that orange. And I kind of like how it came out. I'm not going to lie. The effect is pretty cool. Um... I haven't made any Utena fan art in forever, and I think I did miss it. What am I getting these messages from? Anyway, okay. Yeah, I think I missed not having these marker. I, well, ugh, I'm sorry, I got so distracted from whatever text message I just got sent. Okay, let me recalibrate. Beep boop. All right, my brain's resetting real quick. I missed making Utsuno fan art. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. I haven't made fan art in forever. Is this my first fan art this year? Oh, that's really disappointing if it is. Is it? Oh shit, I think it is. Oh my God, no, Jury was the first piece of fan art that I made this year? There's no way, is that really true? No, 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 I painted, I painted that Howl's Moving Castle landscape last week. So, no, it's not. It's not the only fan art I've made this year. <laughs> Sorry, jury. <laughs> she was so close to being the one. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I haven't been making fan art this year. I've been really, like, avoiding it. Like the plague. My professor says, and my school says, and blah, 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 blah. My career dictates I should make more original art. And so I'm really focusing on the original stuff this year, but you might see a lot of fan art in the drinking when drawing videos because this, these videos are meant for me to just draw whatever the hell. Like Jury from Utsuna. But typically in the past I was like a strictly fan art only artist. Like I wouldn't really make anything else. Uh, this year I have so many plans. So much to do, so much planned for art that it's almost too much, like, I, there's, like, so little time for me to do anything. But I, I really want to make a webtoon this year. I want to get, you know, do more comics. I The issue is I'm an animation student, so doing comics, finding time for making comics is kind of hard. I really want to work in the comics industry, and less so in the animation industry. So I'm trying to get good with comics. Uh, during the off season when I'm not doing animation stuff, animation concept stuff. So this spring break, upcoming spring break, I've got like a little plan to kind of work on, work on some comic related goodies and get some stuff for my portfolio ready. I want to do another, another style test for, for Bad Bones, my possible webtoon, possible future webcomic slash comic in the future. And yeah, just just make more comic stuff, especially during summer break. That's really gonna be the big the big kicker. Is like, can I? How much? How many comics can I make during summer break? How much comic stuff can I make? Because I had a I had a portfolio review at SCAD recently for the comics forum, and Editor's Day is coming up, I think next quarter, and I'm so I'm like freaking out. I'm like, ah, there's so much to do, and I'm just. I'm like, I don't know if this will work or not. I'm kind of just taking shots in the dark when I work on comics, I feel like. But luckily I know a professor or two in the sequential department here at SCAD that they're always willing to help you out and get you going. But at the same time, I have animation professors that are like, what are you doing? Like, you should not be making art like this. This is art that belongs in a comic. Like, you need to change up your style to fit animation. So, it's all a massive struggle, really. And I'm gonna keep working. Oh, look at how angry I got when I messed this up. <laughs> uh, ink smudge. <laughs> I got really pissed off when I did that. I do, I do end up kind of fixing it, but it's still kind of iffy. Anyway, that's just what I've been doing recently. That's just how it's been recently. Trying my hardest to get experience in the sequential world without actually majoring it, majoring in it or minoring in it. Um, in fall, I'll probably be starting my capstone. So once I get there, it's like point of no return. Like I really need to, if I want to work in comics, I really need to focus on comics. 
um, in the off time, af- uh, between betwixt classes and betwixt semesters, I need to focus all my energy into the comic stuff if I really, really want to do that. So that's the plan, you know, for for spring break especially. Spring break is short, but there's a lot that you could do in that span of what is it like ten days. So I definitely am thinking uh, another comics test, full color. I really want to do it in full color. Maybe like a slice of life scene or something with a. Uh, the characters from Bad Bones and the, the uh, world. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, it's stressful. <laughs> it's so stressful. School is so stressful. Don't go to art school. It's stressful. I swear it's the worst. Oh, regrets. Regrets. Anyway. <laughs> That's pretty much all I have to talk about. I can't really think of much else except... No, that's pretty much it. I hope uh, I hope I get to go to France this spring, but I also don't really care if I don't go. I know that sounds silly, but I, I don't care if I don't go to France this spring. It happens, you know. I might end up there, and when I do, I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna make a video from France, from Lacoste. It's gonna be epic. I've never been to France, but We'll see. It's been on the mind a lot recently because it's slowly coming closer and everyone that's meant to go is like, are we going or not? Like, I'm nervous. Is it going to happen? And France is still saying no to visitors from the United States. So we're like, "Uh, we might go, but we might not go. But we'll let you know. Very last minute, we'll let you know. So... We shall see when that happens. I have no idea. (laughs) It's exciting stuff. I'm just hoping that they'll tell me before I move out whether or not we're going. Because if we're not going, then then I'm not moving out. And I don't want to uh, get caught in that kind of situation and issue. Be very problematic. But anyway... uh, I guess maybe I'll maybe I'll just leave you guys here with the vibes and the music and the art. I'm not too sure how many people make it through this far in a video anyway, so I'll leave y'all alone with my art and with the music to enjoy. Thank you guys so much for swinging by again and watching me draw silly stuff like this. I appreciate it. I'm probably gonna film another one quite soon. But sadly, it's not going to be with that new microphone. I'm really sorry. I still got to wait for them to send me one. And I don't think it's going to happen until... Ugh, I don't know when. I don't know when. Hopefully soon. Hopefully the one after the next one. Which I think is what I said would happen, right? I said it the one after the next one. Last time? Oh my gosh, I can't remember. Anyway. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys all next week for the same style video, another drinking and drawing next week, or I will possibly, I don't know, make another, make a fun video at some point as well. I'm really planning on making some different style YouTube videos here. There's more that I wish to post on YouTube, I just need to get around to it. So thanks so much, I hope you all have a wonderful week.
Thank you.